Hi everyone, welcome to Bad Fashion's YouTube channel. My name is Yenis. In this video, I'll be sharing with us how to make this spaghetti gown. This is a spaghetti inner. This will be actually worn under a booboo. But the method I'll be teaching us is also applicable if you want to just sew it as a spaghetti gown and wear it on your own. But this will be used under a booboo. We know that most of our booboos are not lined, so this inner is a must have for every woman that likes booboo. It makes it very comfortable for you to wear your booboo and you don't see the strap coming out on the neckline area and then you are struggling to arrange it. This just makes your life easy and gives your booboo that nice comfort and <laughs> elegant look. I hope this is what you are interested in learning. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please kindly hit on the subscribe button. Thank you. So I'll be making use of this doll face satin to achieve a spaghetti gown. So right now, I've gone ahead to fold my fabric into two. <laughs> So here I folded my fabric into two equal parts. I'll be drafting for both front and back. And I'm using the hip, which is the biggest measurement to determine the fold. My client's hip measurement is 44 inches. When you divide by four, that will give you 11 plus two inches. So that's 13 inches. So right now I have about 26 inches on this table. Can you see this is even more than 26 inches? That's fine. So now you can see I said I, I folded into two. So the up, one of them will be for the front and the other will be for the back. So now I'm going to fold it into four to achieve my 13 inches. So can you see? So I'll be drafting for both front and back together. So first I'm going to draw my starting line here. So from this starting line, because I'm making a spaghetti inner or spaghetti gown, I'll be placing my tape from minus six inches. I'll place my tape from minus six inches. So this, this, this will determine, determine how low the neck will be because you don't want the neck of your chemise to be showing at the neck on the neck of your gown or whatever it is you are using to wear it. So now I'm placing my tape on minus six. So the next thing I'm going to do from this minus six, I'm going to mark her chest line. And her chest line is at 8.5. So next I'm going to mark her waistline. Next, the hip line is 25. And then the full length of the gown. The full length of this gown is going to be 56 inches. You want to make sure that the inner is also shorter than the main the main gown or the shorter than the person's length so that the gown can actually go below the inner so in this case her length is 58 i'm making the length of this shimmy 56 inches plus my hemming allowance so that will be 57 inches take note that my tape is on feet starting from minus six so this is my 56 inches and then i'm stopping here at 57 inches i'm just adding the hemming allowance of one inch so if you want to add two inches please feel free to do so so having done this so you can see this side is opened so this is where my center front and my center back are okay so next i'll come here to the chest line and enter quarter of her bust measurement plus two inches and that is 10.5 plus my two inches I always say two inches, two inches, I'll use one inch to sew and the remaining one inch will be for ease. So that's why I always use two inches. So next I'm going to enter quarter of our waist measurement, which is 9.5 plus same two inches. Quarter of our hip measurement plus the same two inches. So... I'm going to take the same measurement I have here all the way down to the hem of this gown. And that's a total of 
13 inches so i'll bring it down to the hem here and this is where my 13 inches mark stops so i'll bring in my ruler and connect the points so i'll be connecting from the heat line down to this point then from the hip to the waist and from the waist to the chest line like this so can you see so now that i have my markings so remember that we started our measurement from minus six inches so here now on this line i'm going to enter her shoulder measurement half of her shoulder measurement is eight inches so here is my eight inches this is just to give you a direction on how to call your armhole so here is my eight inches so remember i said i'm making a spaghetti shimmy so you want to take this you don't want to leave it exactly at the shoulder tip like here so you want to take it a little inward so that the strap just sits around the midpoint of the shoulder something like that just to shift it inward a little so her actual shoulder measurement is eight inches that's half of it is eight inches so i'm going to be taking this in to seven inches or let's say 6.5 so in this case i'm using seven inches so that by the time i use half inch to turn this part i'll, I'll go in by 6.5 inches i hope you understand that so having done this so next i'm going to bring in my curve so at this seven inches where i have this i'll bring in my curve and connect it to the boss line like this to the chest line like this can you see can you see that so this is what i have here so i use seven inches so by the time i turn my line that's i sew this part with half inch it will take me inwards to 6.5 so that way my strap will sit inside very well so next here on the starting line here remember i used the neck i came down by six inches so i'll place my tape on this six inches and then i'll come down by by seven inch, seven point five inches. This is how deep I want the neckline of this shimmy to be. So you can decide that from that six inches you come down by one, or you leave it at that six inches. That's fine. But me, I want to use that seven point five. I want the neck of the shimmy to come down low. But of course, you need to be careful so that it doesn't get to the bust point. For my client, her bust point is. 11 inches so can you see placing my tape from minus six so you can see where my 11 inches is so you can see how far the neckline that's neck the the height of the neckline is so it's not close to the bust at all so now i'll bring in my pattern master and then connect it like this i'll be connecting it from the center here to this side So can you see that? So that's that. So now I'm going to bring in my scissors and cut it. It's what we have. Can you see? This is what it looks like. Can you see? So next I'm going to place this fabric I have here so we can use it to cut the facing. I'm just going to fold it into two like this and then we'll cut our facing. So can you see? that we now have our facing this will serve as a facing for our shimmy you see so i'll be using it to sew like this like this and then like this so the next thing we'll be doing is to cut the strap that we'll be using for the spaghetti and remember that the length that we came we came down by six inches so six plus six that's 12 inches but remember that we already have a curve here so I'm going to make my strip longer and then I'll show us how to achieve the length of that strap. 
So here I have I've cut these two strips that I'll be using for our spaghetti strap. And here now you can see that I have 15 inches. 15 inches. I made it excess so that we can trim out our excess. Remember that when we came down by minus six, so minus six in front, minus six at the back, that will be 12 inches in all. But I made this long so that we can we can um it can balance here on the neckline because you can see that this part now can you see that we came down by minus six so this apex here the sharpest point here is where we have the minus six but as, as it is going down you can see that it's curved inwards can you see what is happening here so that's the essence of making it longer so next i'm going to take this to my sewing machine like this i'm going to fold this i didn't tell us the width of the of the strip I cut is two inches in width and two inches in width. So what I'll do now, I'll fold it into two like this. So once you fold into two, of course, that will give you one inch. So you fold it right side facing right side. After folding it into two now, I'll take this strap to my machine and sew on half inch. I'm going to sew on half inch. That's I'll sew on this part. And then I'll turn it out to the wrong um, to the right side. So I'll be repeating the same thing for the both of them. You can sew on half inch or a little less than the half inch. That's fine. So I'll sew it and bring it back. So after stitching on half inch, can you see? So you can just go ahead and trim out some of your excess. Trim in your seam allowance. Next, you want to bring in your needle and thread because you can see that this is small. So you will need something to help you turn it out on the right side. So after trimming out my excess, you need your needle and thread. So you can see, you want to make sure that you knot this needle very well. Um, knot the thread very well. This is so that it's very thick, so that it doesn't... Um, pull off from the fabric. So once you do that now, you pick this part where you stitch. Can you see, just pick your seam allowance like this. Can you see? So I haven't picked it, you can see that's, that's hooked to it. So all I need to do now is to start pushing this fabric inside. So you just want to push some, a, just put some part of it that's the tip inside. So once I've pushed a little, some of it inside like this, so take note that I'm using the bottom of my needle. So then next, you're going to just push out your needle. So once you push out your needle, can you see? So you just want to pull. Can you see that? Can you see that? It just makes it easier now. So you can see how your fabric is just going in. Can you see? So this just makes your work a lot easier. So you can see how easily it came out. Can you see? So I'm just going to cut my thread from here. And then I'll repeat the same thing for this one. So as you can see, I've equally turned out the other strip and I also pressed it. So you can see my seam line here. You can see I centralized the seam line here. This is so that when the strap is on the skin, you will not see, is on the body, you will not see the place where we joined it. This part with the seam line will be the one facing the body of my client. I hope you understand. So I did the same thing. I ironed it in a way that the seam line is facing the back side. So you don't want to just put the seam line by the side and it is showing. So now I'll bring in the, the gown, okay? So I'm going to place the strip like this. So remember that it was from minus, uh, minus six we started, right? So I'm going to place my tape like this. And remember I said I'll be using this half inch here to turn my facing. Can you see? This part, I'll be using half inch at this side to sew the facing. So of course my strap is going to come in by half of an inch. So from here now, what I'll be doing is this. Remember that this part is where we have our six inches. So this is where six inches is. 
So taking our measurement from here, can you see that we have exactly our six inches? I hope you can see it clearly. We have exactly our six inches. So remember that normally when we are sewing our basic bodies, we always take out the shoulder slant. So of course our shoulder is not straight. So here now, what I'll be doing, I'm just going to trace out this shape, exactly this shape I have here. But of course it cannot be straight because this place is not straight. It's going to be curved like this. So this is what I'll be doing. So placing my tape from here, making sure that I have this six inches here. Can you see that? Making sure that I have the six inches here. So I'm going to just trace out this shape. So can you see that the strap, the base of the strap is not straight. Can you see? It just curves to give that nice curve to follow the shape of the neckline. So what this means is that I did not add sewing allowance to this. I used exactly the length that I should have there. So that by the time I sew in with half inch, half inch, it will bring, it will give that tight fitting on the shoulder. So that it sits well on the shoulder. You don't want to wear a spaghetti strap and then it's falling like this. You don't want that kind of problem. So if this is six inches that I have, can you see? Can you see? Let me just make sure it's open like this. So can you see? I have exactly 12 inches here. So by the time I sew it half inch in front, half inch at the back, it will bring me to 5.5. Because this is 6 inches on fold. So it will bring me to 5.5. So it will sit firm on the neckline, on the shoulder line of my client that will be wearing it. And even on yourself, if you are making it for yourself. So that is why I didn't add that half inch. I hope we understand. So I'm going to place this one too on this side. Because exactly the shape I have here is the same thing I'll have on this side. But now you need to do it in a way that it will be in the opposite direction. Take note that this one was like this. Can you see? And it is curved this way. So to be able to get this one now, I'm going to have to flip this over like this. Can you see what I'm doing? I'll flip it over like this. And then cut out this shape. You want to make sure that they are equal. So can you see that? So this is for this side. Giving the slanted shape. And this is for this side. That this is what we have. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to open up the strap. Remember that this is how it will be. So I'm going to just flip it like this. So you can see the side with the seam line here is the one now facing up. So the side without the seam line is the one facing the fabric. So I'll come in by half of an inch here. That's coming here by half of an inch. And pin this. So I'll also bring this one too. Remember that this is how it is with the curve. So I'll also come in by half of an inch here. And pin this. Can you see? So can you see what a strap looks like? So I'm going to stitch this down. Stitch this down. Exactly what I'm doing for the back is what I'll do for the front. Then I'll go ahead and place my face in this way. I'll place my face in this way. I'll sew the armhole like this. So on half inch round the neckline, so on half inch this way and bring it down this way. So I've sewn the strap to this part. So as you can see, I've stitched it this way. Can you see? So now I'll turn it to the wrong side like this. Can you see what it looks like? Can you see? So I'll need to press this part. Like, so now I'll bring in the other back piece also. Can you see? So I'll place it right side facing right side now.
just the same way I pinned the other one. I'll come in by the same half of an inch. Okay, so and then I'll also stitch it down, stitch it down here, and then I'll place my facing right side facing right side and stitch it just the same way I stitched the other side. So of course that means I'm done with the neckline, then I'll shape the sides and then hem it and bring it for us to see. So here is what our spaghetti gown looks like. It came out really beautiful. So like I said earlier that this method is also applicable when you are making a spaghetti gown you want to wear outside. Remember that this is going to be worn inside but there's absolutely no difference. It's the same thing with the one you're wearing outside and the one you're wearing inside. So it's a spaghetti gown. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this video. Please like, share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.